now we have the Alan with one L <laughs> coming in. So I did not decide on the program based on everybody's name, even though it might look like it. <laughs> uh, we, we have the B's coming after these A's. Um, soon but alan nice to have you here uh i know it must be really early for you no so. not too bad not too bad this is much better than the asian ones so oh, yes that that is so true but hey so you promised to drown us all in slides or what was that <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah i usually fill this session pretty well uh, this time i think i overfilled it but uh not not, not the number of slides necessarily but the amount i need to yeah, say your, your slides, slides yeah. are always so yeah. good so hey yeah. we'll we'll forget to give you yeah. um okay so you are going to basically take us back to the future or what the Something what like was that. the topic yeah. about? <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm jumping into my DeLorean and letting you take the stage. Um, All right, very good. Go. Let me get into slideshow mode here. You see that well? I'll assume yes. All right, so yeah, it's kind of a back to the future thing. I, that's a great title. I should have come up with that one. But um, um, So APIs, how do we get here and where are we going next? Uh, and uh, because I do have quite a bit to cover in this session, I'm going to skip through some of my early things. I usually introduce myself. I'm going to skip that. Um, if you want to know who I am, connect with me on LinkedIn, and I'm happy to have a chat with you. Um, I do a lot of writing um, about things, and actually what I'm going to cover today, I've written about uh, in my two most recent blogs. So I'll point you to those at, at the end. All of this stuff at the bottom are links, uh, are numbers of things that I've written on these topics. And again, all of that is included in the content. So with that, let's move into the into the session. So um, my role in IBM, I'm a business strategist and I'm often asked, you know, what's coming next? Where, you know, where should I be looking uh, for the next thing that's gonna come hit me and so I can be prepared for it? And so naturally, as I think about that question, I look to the, the future, uh, but actually that's not true. Uh, I actually have to look to the past because nobody can predict the future, but what we can do is take a look in the past and see what's happened and what led us here. And so I was thinking about that when I you know, was asked to come up with a topic for this conference, brand new session, you're the first ones to see it. Um, and I thought about looking backward and understanding what we've gone through that got us here and, and how are things working today? And, and what we'll see as we go through this is that Every step along the way in the past was a challenge in some way that we were faced with and we overcame it with some capability. Um, and, and that moved us forward to the next challenge and then we overcame that one and so on. And so that made me thinking about what are the next challenges today and how are we gonna overcome those? So lofty topic to cover in 25 minutes. Uh, they keep telling me I should have 20 minutes and five for questions. They keep telling them that's not likely to happen. So let's get into it. So I'm going decades back here now, right? So in the beginning, um, a program needed to call another program, which was of some value to it, you know, rather than recreate that program logic in itself, which was a problem at the time, um, how were they going to call this other program? Um, and, and the early answer to this was not very easily. That a lot of these old programs um, didn't have even a technical API at the beginning. They had a, a, a horrible, ugly interface. Um, and so the only way and the code that was written in this program was not easily segmented so that you couldn't necessarily take off the interface and just invoke the business logic. You had to go through the interface because it was all intertwined in there. So so a technique called screen scraping came about and people started to, you know, you know, simulate what people would enter in a screen to be able to get into that program. And, and that, that was challenging. Uh, eventually, they did, you know, start to think about segmenting the application so that there was an interface to it. Um, and that, that's where the term API really started to, to happen. That's not the same API that we talk about today with business or web APIs, but but it was an application programming interface. And typically, the, I call these technical APIs, they, they were not easy to use. They weren't meant to be consumer friendly. They were basically an interface that described what the program did. And so everything you could possibly do with the program was exposed from a provider perspective and then you could do a, a remote procedure call to get into that uh, that technical API. So that was where things started. Um, the next challenge that we we saw was that you know okay that worked for within my company, 
but how do I deal with other companies? And, and so how can I make multiple businesses communicate, for example, for supply chain? And you know, trying to use an RPC across businesses was not going to work. The security setups, the, the different interfaces, just really challenging to do that. So we needed to come up with a different way to handle uh, multiple companies working together. And, and the answer was really files. Um, so I can always send you a file, right? So if I can build a file on my side, we'll have some kind of an agreement on what the, the, the structure would be, and I'll send you that file and you can read what, what's in it, right? So I, I use the records. These are not really supposed to be music records, but we put some records in a file and then they go over the company B and they take them out of the file, right? And, and, and that's the way businesses were working together from an from a integration perspective. Um, on top of that, we then saw things like EDI, electronic data interchange, come in, which puts some standards around the structure of the, of the records uh, and value-added networks around EDI that allowed for the transmission of the files to the different trading partners that were involved. So, so a bunch of things have happened in this space, but that was another challenge area that, that we overcame. Uh, the next thing that happened was uh, we started to get uh, a lot of distributed computing and different applications would be running on different platforms, sometimes with different character sets in them, uh, and we needed to complete a business transaction, but you know, sometimes the application would be down, sometimes the system would be down, sometimes the network would be slow or you know, uh, having a problem. And so what if the destination system that I was trying to put an order into, for example, was, was, at, was not available at this time? And I couldn't complete it. Uh, you know, how was this going to work, right? So, so we started to introduce what we now think of as middleware, and, and so we had a messaging capability. So, application A could worry about what application A is responsible for doing, and application B could worry about what it's responsible for doing. And this whole communication between them, which was extremely difficult to make sure that the message got there successfully, one and only one time. Uh, could be offloaded from the business developer for the applications and put in, into this messaging middleware. So I can just say to the messaging middleware, take this message, make sure it gets there, right? And, and then you know, if, the net, if the network is down, it waits until it's back up and then you know finishes the transaction, right? And then on top of this, we, we ended up with multiple other kinds of scenarios like pub sub, um, and, and, and you know other things, one-to-many routing, things like that. So a lot of other things happen based on the, this idea of messaging. All right, so now we're going fine. Things are the, things are starting to work a little better. We've got solutions for a couple of things, but we're starting to grow, right? So there's different applications um, all over the place now, and and, and you know we're, we're starting to have to handle this growth, and each application. Is dealing with a certain set of data that it knows and it wants to know about, and it formats it in a certain way that it likes. And, and so there's no standards to the formatting of the data, and keeping the data in sync across these multiple applications started to become a problem. And also, um, you know, when I had one application communicating with one other application, or maybe two or three, it wasn't so bad. But when I'm starting to get up to you know eight, nine, maybe more applications involved then the idea of tailoring a specific call to every application and making sure that it gets there appropriately, uh, even using the messaging, um, what was challenging. We, we started to talk about the spaghetti architecture, right, where all these point-to-point -point kind of a connections were coming uh, into being. So this was a big, uh, important time for integration. This is really one of the before API uh, that we all are focused on today took off there was these things about message brokers and then service-oriented architecture. So message brokers introduced it, introduced this hub and spoke kind of a thought and helped get rid of some of the spaghetti thinking. It also introduced canonical message forms so we could all map into a certain um, definition and then out from that definition if we didn't use that exact definition. Then on top of that, SOA, service-oriented architecture. Big deal back in the early 2000s. Um, added the idea of services, right? So, so a, a service interface, again, it's starting to think about interfaces here as a facade for traditional or new applications or maybe even multiple applications. And the big focus on SOA was reuse, right? So we drove reuse through governance and this idea of the enterprise service bus, which was kind of like the messaging thinking that we're gonna take away the idea of connectivity, but not just the connectivity, the routing, uh, the transformation, 
all of that would be handled by the enterprise service bus, right? So we ended up with everything connects to the enterprise service bus, and then everything comes out of the enterprise service bus. And, and again, focus here was separation of concerns so that you know the application can focus on the application does, and the other application can focus on what it does, and we let let the integration be handled by the enterprise service bus. And so this whole area fits into a category called application integration, which provides all of this transformation and, and routing and protocol conversions and so on. All right, so SOA solved a lot of problems, but also introduced some problems, right? So these services became very big. If I'm going to have a single view of an account or an order or a customer or whatever, uh, that had a lot of data in it, a lot of different things that you could care about. But many times I wouldn't need all of that data. I would just need a small part of that data, especially as mobile apps started to come into being later in the in the 2000s. Um, and, and I didn't want to send this big chunk of data across the network to go get some information, another big chunk of data coming back at me, um, and then I'd have to parse through to get one small piece of information. And then governance became a little bit um, cumbersome, I'll say, or burdensome, right? That there was a goal to drive reuse of these things, but there was also a concern about how much is somebody trying to use this and who's going to pay for that and all these kinds of things that I, I used to be in the SOA part of IBM. We dealt with that uh, all the time. And then we didn't really focus up until now on security, uh, especially for things that were coming in from outside the enterprise. So this gets us to our favorite you know, topic of, of API days, APIs, right? So, so we introduced APIs really to solve most of these problems, uh, but it really did a lot more than that. When once we once we exposed these capabilities that we had in the application area as very easy to consume, self service onboarding, security is there, analytics is there. We not only got the ability to onboard consumers quicker and you know reduce the amount of interaction data that they had to to send back and forth. But we also were able to spawn new capabilities in the business, right? So we did things like around the API economy and monetization. And after that, digital transformation started to kind of build up based on the ability to do all these easy things, which also involved often partnering with other companies through ecosystems and, and marketplaces. So, so, you know, this has been the focus for the last 10 years or, or so. We've been We've been, uh, you know, excited about all these different opportunities that have come out of, of business API. Um, later, in, kind of in the midst of the API scenarios, cloud started to hit really big, and so cloud and microservice applications uh, were starting to work hand in hand, and, and this started to bring things so that they were not co-located uh, anymore. So we didn't have everything on premise. We now were traversing the network from a cloud to a central location and then maybe out to a different cloud or the same cloud. And, and there were some concerns about latency um, and security risk as things were floating across the network, right? So, you know, a whole history on this chart here of from the centralized enterprise service bus to socializing through APIs. But then the same microservice capabilities that were introduced for applications could be applied to API management and to the other integration capabilities so that we not only could uh, use microservices uh, for uh, the agility and for decentralization for um, the applications, but also for APIs and for the application integration. So we could start to move these into the cloud as well. And so there was no longer a need to come on premise to then go back out again, right? So that we could put the integration where it needs to be along with the applications that are being invoked. Um, of course, now we, we start to hit scalability. So things are, you know, every time we remove one of these challenges, we add a new one, right? So now we're starting to grow even faster because things can happen in a much more agile way. And so we're starting to get the number of applications increasing, their usage is increasing, the number of backend transactions is increasing because every API call that happens goes all the way into the back end and back out again, or maybe there's some some caching for some things that you can do that with, but this this had uh, some cost to it, right? And so now what we're starting to see is asynchronous um, capabilities like events move in that move the data to the application that needs it in advance of the application needing it, right? So so I have a, a change in the amount of a product in inventory. I can push that out to all the different stores that are selling the product 
and locally they now know what the new inventory number is and when they want to check to see if they have it you know available they can they can tell right so uh, this uses public pub sub um to allow applications to subscribe to what they need and we push the information out there so you know apis can come all the way in but events can push it out once and we don't have to deal with every single need of a piece of information all coming in to get that same piece of information uh, that we could send out one time with events all right so that was a quick run through history there and, and so I'll, I'll i'll take a breath and, and give you a little quiz question here right so i i just discussed a whole bunch of different integration capabilities over time screen scraping file and edi messaging application integration business apis with the security gateway and events and what can we notice about this full list of integration capabilities and it's questions like this that i wish we were back in person again and could actually get some answers from from you all out there but my answer is they all still exist right so every single one of these things is still being used today um, just because we introduced a subsequent integration capability doesn't mean that we did away with the previous one it just added another in integration capability into our toolkit that we can use appropriately and in fact in many cases multiple of these are used together in, in real solutions so we often focus in um, on a specific technology and say we need an api and, and so um, we're not thinking about the whole solution which is what happens after an api is called right and so when, when you call an API, it has to do something. And, and what is that something that it does in the enterprise? Well, sometimes it may access a single piece of data in a database and come back with it. But other times, maybe there's a more complicated thing that's happening on the back end, like an order being invoked, which I'll show you in the next slide, a scenario of that, where we're using multiple application integration and messaging things to finish off the entire order. Um, if somebody does build an application integration, uh, in, in your business, how are they going to expose that for somebody to use it? Often, often by an API, right? So they're going to build an API that comes out of that, uh, that invokes the application integration. Um, if you have an event uh, that, that triggers a need for somebody to do something, and I need a real-time response to that, what do I do? I could call an API to take an immediate action. So again, looking at the bigger picture here, you know, we see that multiple of these can be used together. And then finally, with file, well not finally, there's one more after this, files, as we, you know, I showed the file being created with the records put in it and shipped over there. Well, how do you put those records into the file? And how do you take them out on the other side? And the answer is application integration can build the file and then send it over. And then the, the other businesses application integration can remove the records from the file and do the things that they want to do with them. And screen scraping, yeah, I mean, you may have doubted that screen scraping is still being used. Uh, I certainly you know, don't think of it as much as I did 30 years ago. Um, but screen scraping is now being a, a whole new area called RPA, robotic process automation, that captures how people work with screens and simulates that in, in the context of a larger process or a larger integration. Right? So, so all of these things still exist today and they all are used with other technologies to provide the complete solution. And, and as an example of that, I came up with this order management scenario where you build an API for taking an order and you may deploy it to a gateway, but on, on, after it gets through the gateway, it has to update, it has to check things in the CRM system and the ordering system. Um, it has to actually enter the order into the ordering system. Um, it then has to, after everything is good, send things off to the logistics and finance system. And it's got to do this, you know, uh, all transactionally so that we're not losing transactions along the way and things are working. And maybe at the end, we're kicking off events that are letting people know when their product is shipped and, and so on. Uh, and of course, if a bad guy comes in and tries to do something, we want to stop them from doing it and toss their uh, stuff away. So, so, you know, all these things working together is really what is more common in, in the world than using any one of these to, to solve all of the world's problems. All right, um, I mentioned digital transformation already and, and digital transformation, I'm not gonna do my normal spiel on, on what it means and everything, but the point here is that uh, this customer centricity and, and everything going on around it has started to cause multiple businesses to work together in this ecosystem, I think, which I also mentioned. And the idea of um, that happening in the context of APIs and microservices and cloud computing and AI 
have caused a, an explosion in the amount of integration things that need to happen within your company, um, across the different locations that you exist, and with your partners in the ecosystem with all the systems that they have. And so just the amount of, of integration need is starting to, uh, to explode. And, and the problem is that that's a challenge, right? That's the, the challenge that we're seeing now. And, and so 70% of digital transformation projects are failing due to a lack of integration quality. And, and so businesses cannot keep up with the quality uh, of what needs to be done to handle this growth for digital transformation. And so what we're seeing is today's challenge is that these integration requirements are handled by people in process or need to be handled by people in process in a decentralized ownership pattern, allowing the teams to do what they need to do. And we need an architecture that supports that uh, with a microservice API led event driven kind of a, a structure to it that can run on any cloud anywhere at any time. And, and so so this is today's challenge, right? Today's challenge is that the need for integration is increasing and the need to scale the ability to deliver quality integration solutions uh, has, to, has to be solved. And so that's, in my view, the next integration challenge. This is where, where we have to come up with a breakthrough to, to handle this. And, and so what we're thinking about in IBM is we need to be able to let more developers do this. And, and so how do I get more developers Previously, this has always been done by a centralized team um, and, and they have expert skills and, and, and there's only so many of them to go around. So things were getting backlogged or done poorly. And, and so the answer in our perspective is to use automation to speed the integration development and remove manual tasks and reduce the potential for errors, right? If we can automate things in the, being done the right way, um, then, then we take out the the skill level necessary to uh, to have that centralized team be the ones that do everything. And we also want to use artificial intelligence to capture the skill uh, of the experienced integration experts and support these additional developers and help them do things the right way, providing them a confidence level that um, you know we're looking over their shoulder basically in this artificial intelligence way and and, and guiding them to make the right choices for what what they should be doing. And so that's that's our thinking. Um, we think this is going to be the, the the big challenge coming up um, is you know this lack of uh, of skills at the central uh, integration team, uh, whether that's API app integration, you name it, any of the ones we mentioned, um, and and we need to solve this. And, and so what we're doing in IBM is embedding that into our product called the Cloud Pack for Integration. And if you haven't heard about this before. Um, I definitely encourage you to listen in on some of the, the roundtables that are happening here at the conference or go to the booth and ask some questions. I'm not going to get into the details of this. I don't have the time. Um, but it includes all of the integration capabilities that we talked about, and it's being based on automation and AI, right? So, so we're, we're trying to bring this you know, ability to you. Obviously, you're going to have to implement this with your, uh, with your personnel to make it work in your environment. So... With that, some final thoughts. Uh, have a good set of integration tools and use the right tool for the job. I mean, I said you can bang in a nail with a screwdriver, but it's going to be much more difficult and, and the outcome probably is not going to be what you want. Uh, um, I see many people who think, you know, APIs solve every problem and, and you know, trying to do things like um, what messaging does or application integration with transactionality, you've got to code all that in there. And why not, why not just use the tool that already does it? And expect, you know, that the bigger picture is there and that let this, you know, put multiple tools in your hand and, and drive this um, um, to be successful. Uh, <laughs> the, the title of the, the blog I wrote was Good Integration Patterns Never Die, You Just Add More. And, and so, you know, taking a look back and understanding how we got here is important and it lets us take a look forward and see what uh, what things, you know, we can, um, you know, look, look to see that the next challenges are going to be. So, you know, I ask you the question, what constraints are you seeing that are holding you back from, from exploding this in, in your environment? And could you benefit from AI and automation and, and let that help uh, in your environment? So with that, uh, I did mention there are lots of uh, resources at the back of this presentation when you download it. And the two new ones are at the bottom of 
column two here. Good integration patterns never die. You just add more and a perspective on current integration scenarios and what might follow. Those two are, 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 are basically what's in this set of uh, PowerPoint content. Um, and that's it. So the rest of the, the deck here is just more links to a bunch of things that I've written and I'm sure I've done over time, but uh, let me uh, let me stop there and, and uh, see if there's any questions. Yeah, and I was muted. So yes, uh, we have like one minute to go, like you promised. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been watching the comments there uh, that Hamer says here, annoyingly sensible talk with common sense. Well, that's that's my thoughts exactly. And 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 Hamer and Mats are uh, basically saying that even driven architecture is making a comeback, and that Eddie never does um, disappear. So I think that. Your point was excellent about the kind of uh, integration uh, professionals versus the, the developers who almost don't know that they are integrating. A lot of times, right. a lot of people are doing integrations in the company. <laughs> they don't know that they are doing, you know, integrations yeah. with the guy. And that's a good thing, right? You know, that, I mean, yeah. that, that's what we want, right? So if we can make this exactly. so that it just becomes part of what they do. but. But we also don't want to recreate. One of the things I talked about in the articles, I don't want to recreate some of the problems we had, right? I don't want to recreate spaghetti, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I you know, I, I, I and so, so we have to be careful when we go down some of these paths um, that that we don't, you know, want to cause some of the problems we already solved. Exactly. But hey, thank you, and uh, I I know everybody's loving you in the chat there, so you might go and say. Okay, I'll take a look. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and make sure to go to I.